and we are going to discuss poles, zeros and network response on the geomega axis that is for sinusoidal excitation. As we have seen last time a network function f of s is real and rational is of the form n of s by d of s and we express this in the form k times n of s by d of s where the leading coefficients in both numerator and denominator are unity. We assume that the degree of n of s this is the way it is written is less than the degree of d of s that is we assume that capital F of s is a proper rational function. We also showed that if we <coughs> if we find the roots of n of s and d of s then we can write this as s minus z i continued product over i divided by continued product s minus p j continued product over j where z i's are the zeros and p j's are the poles. What we wish to find out is capital F of j omega that is when s equal to j omega and then plot the magnitude and phase of capital F with frequency or the real part and imaginary part. Now <coughs> in the process you see that the terms now become of the form j omega minus z i divided by continued product j omega minus p j. And <coughs> while analytically of course we can find out the, the amplitude and the phase it is instructive to see how it can be obtained graphically and what further information can be obtained from the graphical procedure. Let us represent <coughs> the quantity j omega minus let us say z 1 a typical factor in the numerator a typical factor in the denominator shall also be found in the same fashion. Suppose you have the s plane sigma j omega and z1 let us say is somewhere here okay, z1. This 0 is a complex 0 of course z1 star shall also be a 0 but that is beside the point. Now if I if I if I <coughs> find a point if I take a point j omega on the j omega axis okay, then j omega in the complex plane is represented by a vector starting from the origin to the point which is distant omega on the vertical axis. Okay. J omega rep is represents this vector just like a plus j b if this is j b and this is a, a plus j b is a point and it is also a vector this is a plus j b. Okay. Its magnitude is equal to magnitude of this and the angle is equal to this angle all right. a plus j b is in the complex plane it is a vector whose <coughs> the length the distance from the origin is its magnitude square root of s square plus b square and this angle which is tan inverse b divided by a is the angle. Okay. So j omega is a vector which lies on the vertical axis j omega axis and similarly z1 is a complex quantity it is a point it is also a vector like this. And by the triangle of vectors this is the vector z1 by the triangle of vectors j omega minus z1 would be this vector agreed j omega minus z1 is this vector because z1 plus j omega minus z1 is j omega by the triangle of vectors okay. and therefore j omega minus z1 in the s plane is a vector whose length whose length this length is the magnitude of j omega minus z1 let us call that as let us call this as n1 alright and the angle that it makes with the sigma axis let us call this angle as psi 1 okay. this gives the angle angle of j omega minus z1 is equal to psi 1. Is that clear the graphical representation? 
and therefore, j omega minus z 1 can be written in terms of the polar form as n 1 e to the power j psi 1 agreed. And this can be done for all the 0 factors for all the factors of the denominator and all the factors of the numerator. And therefore, <coughs> if I represent j omega minus p 1 by <coughs> its magnitude is m 1 and the angle is let us say theta 1 all right exactly like the 0 factor we can represent a pole factor like this. If the magnitude and angles are m and theta then obviously, a network function f of j omega can be represented as n 1, n 2 up to n m with the degree of n of s is m divided by m 1, m 2 up to m n if the degree of the denominator is n multiplied by k the constant and e to the power j the angles of the numerator factors which is psi 1 plus psi 2 plus etcetera plus psi m then minus because this comes as m 1 e to the power j theta 1 when it goes up it becomes minus theta 1 minus theta 2 minus etcetera minus theta n. So, this is the representation of the complete network function. I can abbreviate this as continued product of n i, continued product of m j, continued product over i over j e to the power j summation psi i over i minus summation theta j over j. Okay. <coughs> this helps us to pictorially see the shape of the network response either its amplitude response or the phase response or both okay. and this is a graphical procedure for evaluating a network function. Although it is hardly used to actually compute a network function it helps us to visualize and to solve and to solve uh, wherever there is a question whether the phase is plus 180 or minus 180. Okay. If a quantity is negative the angle can be plus 180 or minus 180 it is the same thing, but if we, we slightly differ from the frequency at which the phase is 180 it will matter whether it is positive angle or negative angle because we go either in the second quadrant or in the third quadrant and therefore, in solving such riddles or such places where there is a, a chance of confusion this picture this pictorial diagram helps us tremendously and we shall illustrate this with an example. Is this uh, graphical procedure clear? Okay. We take an example of a network function a simple enough network function <coughs> let us say f of s is equal to 4 s divided by s squared plus 2 s plus 2. Obviously, we have a 0 at the origin this is 4 times. So, if you write this as k n of s by d of s then k is equal to 4 n of s is simply equal to s and d of s equal to s square plus 2 s plus 2 and it is not difficult to see that d of s the poles are the factors are s plus 1 plus j 1 multiplied by s plus 1 minus j 1. Okay. So, the pole 0 diagram would be like this <coughs> you have a 0 at the origin and a pole here and a complex conjugate pole here where this is minus 1 and this point is j 1 this point is minus j 1 agree. Okay. This is the pole 0 diagram and all that is required to know to know the network function is the multiplying constant k. Once you know the poles and zeros you can construct the network function provided 
you know the multiplying constant or two within an arbitrary multiplying constant you can find the network function. Now suppose we want to find out let us say <coughs> I will draw the diagram again. Suppose you have this and this and this is the z. This is j1 minus j1. Suppose you want to find out f of j2 all right at the frequency 2 omega equal to 2 you want to find out what the network function is. So, mark the point j2 here mark the point j2 here and then draw the vectors from the 0 and also from the 2 poles okay. from the 0 <coughs> obviously the magnitude of the vector is 2 well f of j2 will be 4 multiplied by this length is 2 and the angle is angle is 90 90 okay. Then from this the vector is this and obviously this is 1 this is 1. So, the the length of this vector is root 2 and this angle is 45 ok. So, this will be 2 multiplied by root 2 and it would be plus or minus this is the angle of the pole and therefore, minus minus, minus 45 and then you have to draw another vector from this to the point j 2 and one can find out this length is 3 and this length is 1 and therefore, you can see that this is equal to square root of 10 and the angle is tan inverse 3 by 1 tan inverse 3 is 71 degrees 71.8 degrees and therefore, yes this root 2 should come in the denominator and root 10 should also come in the denominator because this is a pole factor and the angle should again subtract 71 degrees 0 0.8 and this comes out as 1.78 angle minus 26.8 all right <clears throat> in a similar manner we can find out at a few representative values and then plot capital f of j omega magnitude and its angle that is its phase let's look at some more <coughs> interesting features of this network function our function is f of s equal to 4 s divided by s squared plus twice s plus 2 all right. <coughs> and we have just found out that s equal to j omega ok the value of f of j omega magnitude and the angle of f of j omega we have just found out one representative point that is at j 2 at j 2 the magnitude is 1.78 and the angle is minus 26.8. <coughs> we can find out at some other frequencies, but the frequencies that are most uh, easily um, easily uh, calculated the network function is calculated uh, are the extreme frequency that is 0 and infinity. Suppose s equal to j 0 s equal to j 0. Now, if s tends to 0 then obviously, f of s tends to the lowest power here and the lowest power here. So, you get 4 by 2 that is 2 times j 0 the magnitude obviously is 0, but the angle is plus or minus plus 90 okay the angle is plus 90 because s equal to j 0 all right this behaves as 4 s by 2 as s tends to 0 which is equal to twice s and I have substituted s equal to j 0 the magnitude is 0, but the angle is 90. Okay. 
0 plus no I have put s equal to j 0. So, but the total form is of the form 0 plus j 0 as a angle is 0. Hmm. So, the angle, so, the angle is not usually okay. defined at the line. Then 0 by 0 is not defined. But you see the value as s tends to 0, 0 plus j 0, 0 minus j 0, minus 0 plus j 0, minus 0 minus they are all the same point. As s tends to 0 either of this any of these four combinations this tends to twice s there is no doubt about that. Now, you put s equal to 0 s equal to j 0 and the angle is we are we are traversing the j omega axis not the real axis. If we had traversed the real axis we would have put s equal to 0 all right now <coughs> or minus 0 whatever it is. So, the angle is pi by 2 because of the factor j in a similar manner if you look at s tends to infinity then f of s s tends to infinity tends to the highest power factors that is 4 s by s square. So, it will be 4 by s 4 by s not 2 highest power factor these are the ones that dominate when s tends to infinity and therefore, the magnitude at s equal to infinity j infinity would be 0, but the angle would be minus 90 and therefore, we know <coughs> we know how the magnitude varies. So, the magnitude starts from 0 goes to 0 in between it must go through a maximum okay. and uh, the angle starts from plus 90 and goes to minus 90. So, in between it must pass through 0 all right the angle must pass through 0. Indeed, if you take a few more frequencies on the j omega axis and find out the, the values then the plot <coughs> you can show that the plot is like this. The magnitude that is capital F of j omega magnitude is like this it starts from 0 goes to a maximum and then infinity and this point happens to be approximately 1.5 and the maximum approximately is 2. On the other hand <coughs> On the other hand the phase angle of f of j omega starts from plus 90 plus pi by 2 and goes to minus pi by 2. Can you tell me where the phase will be 0? Guess it is this frequency 1.5 you can see by putting 1.5 that the phase is indeed 0. So, uh, it goes like this the plot is like this. <coughs> I am tempted to uh, tell you another one more feature of this transfer function that it is it looks like a bandpass filter is not it. It, dis, it uh, discriminates against low frequencies it discriminates against high frequencies and it accepts a band of frequencies around 1.5. So, it is a bandpass filter, but it is a bad bandpass filter, it is a lousy bandpass filter because the discrimination is not strong enough. We would have called it strong enough if we had a curve like this. So, there is a, there is a weak resonance here, weak resonance at this frequency 1.5. Okay. And if you look at the function 4 s by s square plus 2 s plus 2, it is not very difficult to find out to to show that it is indeed a bandpass filter. You see you can write this as 4 divided by s plus 2 by s plus 2 agreed which I can write as 4 divided by 2 plus j with s equal to j omega we can write this omega minus 2 by omega all right and now you can see the magnitude magnitude would be 4 divided by square root of 4 plus omega minus 2 by omega whole square all right and if you look at this obviously the maximum will be reached because this is a whole squared whole square term cannot be negative the maximum will be reached when this is 0 that means omega squared equal to 2 which means omega is 1.41. So, this maximum is exactly at root 2 not 
it is at root 2 all right and the maximum value there is 4 divided by square root of 4 it is equal to 2 agreed. These are matters of common sense I have not done any analysis or anything I have just written down the expression and I am trying to interpret is that clear that the magnitude at omega equal to root 2 shall be equal to 2 and look at the phase when omega is equal to root 2 this term vanishes. So, the angle becomes exactly 0 degree is not that right this term vanishes the imaginary part of the denominator and therefore, it becomes purely real purely real quantity positive quantity the angle must be 0. You can also see that when omega tends to 0 the angle is 90 plus 90 how if omega tends to 0 this term becomes negligible compared to this term agree and so the denominator goes to minus j infinity and minus j in the denominator is equal to plus j in the numerator and plus j corresponds to an angle of 90. In a similar manner when small omega goes to infinity the second term becomes negligible the angle of the denominator becomes plus 90 and therefore, the angle of the network function becomes equal to minus 90. These are the things that an engineer looks at when he looks at an expression and he should immediately as an electrical engineer and as, an, as a student of SCDR in your future life whenever you look at such a function you should be able to say that this is a bandpass function maximum will occur here this will be the maximum value the phase will start from here phase will end somewhere else at another angle and uh, it passes through zero phase at such and such frequency this should be obvious no analysis should be needed ok. All right <coughs> now let us look at some other interesting cases. Suppose I have a network function now I am going to talk of only common sense nothing else all right. Suppose you have a network function f of s which has a pair of zeros at plus minus j omega naught pair of zeros on the j omega axis j omega naught and minus j omega naught why do they occur in conjugate pairs why do these complex poles and zeros occur in conjugate pairs coefficients are real there is another way of saying this what is it if the coefficients are real the function is called a real function it is a rational function and I also said it is a real function agree that is the function is real when the variable is real then that is called a real function all right. So, uh, complex conjugate poles therefore corresponding to these two complex conjugate zeros corresponding to these two we shall have a term s squared plus omega naught squared in the network function agree multiplied by some other network function let us say f 1 of s all right. So, we are considering a network function f of s which has a pair of zeros on the j omega axis. Now, let us let us see what happens suppose I have a frequency j omega which which is less than j omega naught ok that is I consider a frequency omega below omega naught then what is what would be the angle do not look at the expression what would be the angle due to these two zeros the angle would be from 0 to j omega no what we have is from j omega naught to j omega this vector has an angle of minus 90 from j minus j omega naught to j omega the angle is plus 90. So, the angle should be 0 now let us look at the expression f of j omega obviously is equal to omega <coughs> naught squared minus omega squared f 1 of j omega ok if omega is less than omega naught squared then this factor which is contributed to by the two imaginary zeros contributes a phase of 0 degree plus 90 and minus 90. So, the angle of f of j omega would be equal to 0 degree plus the angle of f 1 of j omega agree provided omega is less than omega naught all right provided omega is less than omega naught what happens when omega exceeds omega naught 
the angle becomes 180 degrees plus or minus plus, plus. plus. because you take it here this angle is 90 this angle is also 90. So, it is plus 180 degree. It can also be seen from the expression if omega exceeds omega naught then this becomes negative. So, it contributes a phase of 180 degrees, but it is not quite clear from the mathematical expression whether it is plus 180 or minus 180 that becomes clear if we take help of the diagram. So, the angle is equal to 180 degree plus angle of this if omega is greater than omega naught. In other words at omega equal to omega naught there is a jump of phase from 0 degree to 180 degrees. Is that clear? At omega equal to omega naught the phase whatever the phase is from omega equal to omega naught minus to omega naught plus there is a jump of phase by 180 degrees contributed to by the factor s squared plus omega naught squared. Now, yes. we do not need because angle of f 1 of j omega oh that that may also have other j omega axis poles or zeros. But what I am saying is whatever is contributed by angle of f 1 of j omega that is different due to these two there shall be a jump of phase from 0 to 180. Correct. So, if it also has a pair of zeros at some other at plus minus j omega naught all right then the jump would be 360 okay yes so you are saying that phase will be 0 degree plus f1 j omega and omega less than omega naught uh -huh. so but uh, when omega is less than minus omega naught it will be minus 180 no i am considering positive frequencies you see conventionally okay that's a good question you see in this plot in this plot i i plotted only for positive frequencies because I know that for negative frequencies the angle is an odd function and therefore I can easily construct it. Similarly for magnitude I do not have to construct again it is an even function so it simply repeats ok. I consider only for positive frequency that is a good good point that good point to question all right. So, due to a pair of j omega axis zeros I repeat there shall be a jump of 180 degrees. I am considering only this factor I am not considering the jump that may occur due to f 1 well if it does then you will have to add it ok. On the other hand if instead of zeros these were poles if these were poles that is if we had a situation like this let us say pole plus g omega naught and minus g omega naught then the jump would have been from 0 to minus 180 is that clear can I explain for the zeros if there is a pair of zeros the jump is from 0 to plus 180. Now, if there are a pair of poles plus 180 jump in the denominator corresponds to minus 180 for the total function ok. So, due to a pair of poles on the j omega axis the j in phase from omega 0 minus to omega 0 plus would have been 0 to minus 180. And if I consider a function like this let us say f of s equal to s squared plus omega 1 squared divided by s squared plus omega 2 squared. Suppose you have a function total function is this where omega 1 is less than omega 2 all right. Then and if I plot its magnitude and phase the magnitude obviously at omega equal to omega 1 shall be shall be 0 is not that right because it will be omega 1 squared minus omega squared and if omega equal to omega 1 the magnitude shall be 0. On the other hand what about the other contribution from minus j omega 1? I have already said this is omega 1 is less than omega 2. Okay, let us write down f of j omega equal to omega 1 squared minus omega squared divided by omega 2 squared minus omega squared. All right. The contribution due to this whatever it is if it is not 0 
then we do not bother. 0 divided by any quantity is 0 and therefore, the magnitude at j at omega equal to omega 1 shall be equal to 0 f of j omega 1 shall be equal to 0 all right and there shall be a jump of phase at omega 1 from 0 to 180 all right if omega exceeds omega 1 if omega is omega 1 plus obviously the quantity shall be negative and the phase shall be 100 plus 180. On the other hand at omega equal to omega 2 what is the value? The magnitude is infinity at omega equal to omega 2 the magnitude is infinity and the angle shall jump from whatever value it was by minus 180 degrees whatever value it was all right. Now, it is very pardon me ok magnitude. <coughs> now, if you reflect on this a little bit then you can show you can see that the magnitude of f of g omega I have said omega 1 is less than omega 2 you can see that the magnitude magnitude is always positive the magnitude shall pass through 0 magnitude what shall it start from at s equal to 0 what is the value magnitude omega 1 square divided by omega 2 square this is less than 1 right because omega 2 is assumed to be greater than omega 1. So, if 1 is here it starts from somewhere here then it must pass through a 0 at omega equal to omega 1 at omega equal to omega 2 it goes to infinity. So, it must go like this infinity and then when omega goes to infinity what is the value ok my function is omega 1 squared minus omega squared omega 2 squared minus omega squared when omega goes to infinity the value is unity and therefore, it comes back to this. This is the plot of the magnitude I cannot show infinity on a finite plane and therefore, I simply break it ok. This is the magnitude what about the phase let us look at the phase phi <coughs> the phase you see if omega is less than omega 1 if omega is less than omega 1 obviously the phase is what 0 if omega is less than omega 1 this quantity is positive this is also positive and so the phase is 0 at omega equal to omega 1 there is a jump from 0 to 180. So, this phase will be pi plus pi between omega 1 and omega 2 the phase remains at 180 and at omega 2 the phase jumps from 180 to 0 that is jump is from 0 to minus 180 and therefore, this is the phase plot is this ok my f of s is s squared plus omega 1 square divided by s squared plus omega 2 square if you have understood this diagram then the next discussion is going to be very easy to follow. In this discussion <coughs> we have assumed poles and zeros on the g omega axis. Suppose we shift the poles on the g omega axis slightly to the left poles cannot be shifted to the right agree cannot be shifted to the right half plane because then the system would be unstable we cannot have an LLFPB network which is unstable ok. So, if I shift the poles slightly to the left suppose they are here and the coordinates are <coughs> the coordinates are uh, let us say this is sigma naught minus sigma naught and this is j omega naught. 
So, we have two poles at minus sigma naught plus minus j omega naught where obviously sigma naught is much less than omega naught all right. If this is the story if this is the story then what kind of magnitude response do we expect you see if this was exactly on the j omega axis then the magnitude at that point should have been infinity agree if I shift slightly to the left obviously it cannot be infinity therefore what will happen is it will show a peak like this but it shall not be quite infinity this will be a band pass type of response due to this it would be a band pass type of response and what about the phase <coughs> if this poles were in the j omega axis exactly on the j omega axis then the magnitude at omega equal to omega naught would have been infinity right if we have a factor s square plus omega naught square in the denominator then at omega equal to omega naught the this factor becomes 0 so 1 by 0 becomes infinity but suppose the pole is not at plus minus g omega naught but at minus sigma naught plus minus g omega naught slightly shifted to the left then infinity cannot be reached but it would be very high at omega equal to omega naught okay <coughs> and what about the phase if I plot the phase whatever be the previous phase there shall be a jump jump through approximately 180 degree jump uh, down or jump up down so at around omega naught the phase will very rapidly shift from whatever value it was by minus 180 degrees approximately because sigma it is not exactly on the j omega axis okay on the other hand on the other hand if we have a pair of zeros is this point clear okay if we have a pair of zeros on the j omega axis <coughs> plus uh, I, I beg your pardon slightly shifted from the j omega axis let us say this is minus j omega naught and this is minus sigma naught then the magnitude function at omega naught will not show a 0 but will show a a deep it will not reach exactly 0 but it must show a deep like this agreed if these are shifted to exactly on the j omega axis it will go through a 0 such a filter such a response is a band stop response or sometimes called a notch response notch there is a notch here okay <coughs> and what about the phase whatever be the phase earlier the phase at omega equal to omega naught must increase rapidly through approximately 180 degrees approximately 180 degrees okay these are the strongest tools of a circuit theorist an electrical engineer who knows circuit theory by looking at a network function he should be able to say what are the most critical frequencies and what happens at those critical frequencies what happens to the phase what happens to the magnitude and so on and so forth okay now we said that uh, <coughs> you cannot you cannot transfer poles to the right half plane there cannot be any poles in the right half plane can there be zeros okay let us consider two situations there cannot be any poles in the right half plane the question is can there be zeros yes of course zeros are not restricted okay there can be zeros suppose I have a situation in which there are two zeros like this and there are two poles like this all right and a situation in which these zeros are shifted uh, 
let us say to the right half plane by the same amount okay. If this distance is sigma 0 then we take sigma 0 in the right half plane and shift these zeros here and here okay. That is we consider j omega axis as the mirror and shift these zeros to their mirror images agreed. Now the poles remain intact poles cannot be shifted okay. Suppose we take a point j omega on the j omega axis where we want to find out the magnitude and the phase. As far as magnitude is concerned, as far as magnitude is concerned, the distance from here to here and the distance from here to here is the same. Agreed? So, the magnitude of the network function, the two network functions, let us say F1 and F2, will there be a difference? At any point on the g omega axis, the magnitude of this network function and this network function shall be the same okay. What about the phase? These two are equal. What about the phase angle of F1 g omega and angle of F2 g omega? Let us consider uh, one of these situations okay. For this, for this the angle is this much whereas for this vector the angle is obtuse is not that right it is more than 90 this is less than 90 and therefore the similarly for here for here once again the angle is more than 90 and therefore the angle of F2 shall be greater than the angle of F1 is that clear is it okay yeah. It is not a reciprocal system. No, no, systems are reciprocal, all right. You mean reciprocity in the other sense? Yes. Reciprocity, yeah. Like this is reciprocity. Then again, sir, if we uh, invert the response in the excitation. Oh, you cannot invert the response. You see, if you invert this, then these zeros will become poles and they will go to the right of plane. No. That is not the meaning of reciprocity. Reciprocity is different. Oh, sir, we had that. The same excited uh, if the uh, 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 excitation gives a response, then if the response is applied at the excitation state, we will have the output as the. The transfer function does not become the reciprocal. Then it cannot be because then it becomes unstable. Reciprocal of this will have zeros here and poles will be right up plane. No, no wait a second, wait a second. No, what it says is all that. Reciprocal of this will not exist will be unstable. Reciprocal of this will, step, will yeah. be stable, but not for this. This is a perfectly legitimate network function. So, you cannot simply take reciprocal of a network function and, and realize it. Reciprocal of an impedance is admittance. That is perfectly all right. If this is an impedance, its reciprocal can be realized. Can this be an impedance? No. no because its reciprocal will be unstable, will be admittance. But the point that I was mentioning is, let us go back to, you have any other question? Okay. The point that I was mentioning is, if there are zeros in the right half plane and the magnitudes are the same, then these zeros contribute to a larger phase as compared to the zeros in the left half plane, although their magnitudes are the same. All right. Therefore, well, there is a terminology now that I shall introduce, network functions whose zeros are restricted to the left half plane are called minimum phase functions, minimum phase functions. If this is not so, if the zeros are not restricted to the left half plane, then we shall call them simply non minimum phase functions, not maximum phase. We do not know what is maximum. In fact, this terminology is also unfortunate. We do not know if this is minimum, but between the two the magnitudes are the same the phase of this is smaller than the phase of this. Okay. Now what is important is a minimum phase network function is one in which the poles, poles of course have to be in the left half plane there is no question. 
in which the zeros are not allowed to be to lie in the right hand plane. A minimum phase network function is one in, in which the zeros are restricted or constrained to be confined within the left hand plane. Is the point clear? Let us consider <coughs> minimum phase and non minimum phase will play a, a, a dominant role throughout your life. Okay? Not only here in uh, electronic circuits, in control theory, in communication, everywhere. So, you remember this. A simple zeros are in the left hand plane. Okay? That is that's minimum phase. And I have told you why it is called minimum phase. Although the term minimum, minimum is uh, a point in a continuum, whereas there are only two discrete situations. It should not be called minimum, but unfortunately, this is the terminology that has gone through. Let us consider another interesting situation a non minimum phase function in which the poles are the mirror images of zeros. If the geomega axis is considered as a mirror and this is the object then this is the image or if this is the object then this is the image. Okay? And let us say these values are 1 and j 1 that is the zeros are at 1 plus minus j 1 and the poles are at minus 1 plus minus j 1. This is a perfectly valid network function. Okay, it is stable, but non minimum phase. Now, if you take if you take the magnitude for any omega, any point on the g omega axis, if you draw the vectors from the poles and from the zeros, they would be equal. The vector from here to here is the same as the vector from here to here. Similarly, the vector from here to here is the same as the vector from here to here magnitude wise. And therefore, the magnitude of this function would be equal to 1. For arbitrary omega, for all frequencies, all omega it shall be equal to 1. But the angle of course, shall be different. No, the angle is not 0. What is the angle? Angle is from the zeros, from the zeros, I beg your pardon. So, it is this angle plus this angle minus this angle minus this angle. So, the angle is not 0 and the angle varies with value of omega. All right. Such a function, such a function in which the poles are mirror images of the zeros which have the necessary property that the magnitude is a constant for all frequencies is called naturally an all pass function. That is as far as magnitude is concerned it does not discriminate against any frequency all frequencies are passed. The simplest example is s minus 1 divided by s plus 1. You can see by putting s equal to g omega that the magnitude is 1. Simplest example is a first order all pass filter in which there is a 0 at plus 1 and a pole at minus 1. Okay? Such a function is called an all pass function. Now, if it does not discriminate against any frequency, what is its use then? The phase. The phase varies with frequency, so it can be used as a phase compensator. All right as a phase compensation network it can be used and phase and delay which we have not yet come to are very intimately related. So, such so networks pardon me other way around how can that be the 0 is at plus 1 if it is the other way around then this the 0 pole would be at plus 1 pole at plus 1 is not permitted what do you mean by other way around. Reciprocal. No, no. You see, where does this vanish at s equal to 1? 1 is a real quantity, so it is on the real axis. <laughs> Poles and zeros are defined in the s plane, not with g omega. Okay? I am finding out the, f the response at g omega. Okay. Now, therefore, what I am saying is all pass function. 
<coughs> is used to compensate for phase or delay as you shall see later and therefore, they are called all pass network functions are called phase equalizers. You do need them in stereos in very sophisticated stereos or also called delay equalizer delay equalizers. Okay. Now, this function this function that is the function that we have taken is s plus I beg your pardon s minus 1 plus j 1 s minus 1 minus j 1 these are the zeros and the pole square s plus 1 plus j 1 s plus 1 minus j 1 and the function is s minus 1 whole squared plus 1 s plus 1 whole squared plus 1 and you can easily see by putting s equal to j omega that the magnitude is unity because this is s squared plus 2 minus 2s and in the denominator you have s squared plus 2 plus 2s is that right agreed this is s squared minus 2s plus 1 1 and 1 makes 2 if you put s equal to j omega now this becomes real 2 minus omega squared minus 2 j omega that becomes imaginary part and the magnitude is real part squared plus imaginary part squared which would be the same for numerator as well as denominator. But the angle the angle of f of j omega obviously would be minus tan inverse 2 divided by 2 minus omega squared 2 omega divided by 2 minus omega squared where I have made a mistake. Can anybody tell me what the mistake is? What I said was 2 minus omega squared minus j 2 omega this is the network function this is f of j omega and I wrote the phase as this is this correct where is the inaccuracy this is the angle of the new maritime two times that is the correct expression because the angle of the denominator is exactly identical except for a sign and when it comes in the numerator it becomes minus and therefore minus 2 tan inverse 2 omega by 2 minus omega squared and this is where we shall start from the next time.